couldn't be me already upgrading the hardware in my Kubernetes cluster, not even a week since it's been deployed. Let me explain. So if you haven't seen my video, I spent a week trying to learn Kubernetes and eventually deploying it on three Intel Nooks. And I'll link that video up here. If you haven't watched it, I recommend going and check it out. It was certainly uh, an adventure. Wow, Jesus Christ. And that's all fine and dandy, having a relatively low power, three node, high availability setup, but some of the things I wanna host, specifically Nextcloud, are gonna require a bit more storage than the 60 gigabytes that each of these has. Now I know you're thinking, well, just tie it to your NAS. Don't you have like three other servers with a bunch of storage in them? Yeah, but that kind of defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do here in creating an entirely self-contained three node high availability setup all managed within Kubernetes. So I guess we're going to try to add some storage to these NUCs and uh, it's not as easy as you would think. So these NUCs right here, I got off eBay. They were $50 each and the specs on them are not impressive. They have a dual core, four thread, uh, fourth gen Intel laptop grade CPU, four gigs of RAM and a 60 gigabyte SSD. So yeah, it's gonna need a bit of a hardware upgrade. So the first thing we're actually gonna do is upgrade the RAM. So four gigabytes, terrible. Luckily it's DVR3 and it's relatively inexpensive to upgrade. So we went with two eight gigabyte sticks here, upgrading each of these to 16 gigs, which I think is a good number to have, especially in something low powered like this. And yeah, that's easy, but it wasn't really the point of this upgrade. I wanted to upgrade the storage capacity and it doesn't take a genius to see that um, this isn't gonna fit in this. Now, immediately you're thinking, well, yeah, that's a three and a half inch drive. Just go with a two and a half inch drive. I'm sure it'll fit in here. Yeah, there's no um, room for even a two and a half inch drive in here. So we have to get creative. So let's take off the back cover here and I will show you what I found when I was kind of poking around in here. So I was initially hoping that when I opened this up, there would be space for a two and a half inch drive, but as you can see, there is not. However, I did notice that there is a SATA port and a SATA power port, which got me thinking, couldn't I just run a SATA cable and a SATA power cable out through the system and plug it directly into a drive physically? Yeah, so that's what I did. But uh, yeah, there's no real hole in here to route the cables. So I decided to get a little creative. Uh, I'm sure you saw this in the thumbnail. Yeah. So I took a Dremel and some shears to this guy right here to get access to the ports. And I could have just taken the entire cover off, but I don't know. I, I figured I'd try to get handy with it. Yeah. So yeah, cool. Access to the ports, run cables to the hard drive, just like that. Boom, four terabytes, easy. Well, that's what I thought, but turns out that the SATA power in here can't supply enough power to spin up a three and a half inch hard drive. So that was unfortunate. Probably should have tested that before uh, taking a Dremel and shears to this, but no one's gonna see it. Doesn't matter, it's on the bottom. So that led me to my next crossroads. Do I drop a crap ton of money on high capacity SSDs or do I go with something else? I, I went with something else. I previously bought one of these Toshiba four terabyte USB three external drives and it was sitting around doing nothing. And when I saw it, I was like, hey, maybe we can use that as storage for these nodes. Plugged it in. Boot it up fine, works, recognizes the storage immediately. Neat. So that's what we're gonna go with. And I bought two more of them. So these were about $90 each for four terabytes, which isn't too bad. Certainly cheaper than going with solid state storage. And yes, I know these things aren't 
dedicated NAS drives. I'm not going to have redundancy built in, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I know. These are $50 nooks with DDR3 laptop RAM, freaking a laptop grade CPU in here and external hard drives. I'm not expecting crazy performance or even crazy reliability out of these. This is mainly to get my feet wet in the world of high availability Kubernetes. And in the future, I do plan on going with some dedicated, more high power servers and virtualize a bunch of nodes. But you know what? It's a tech YouTube channel. I do things because they're fun and I wanna learn, not because they're always the most efficient. So here we are. Um, I should probably get these RAM sticks installed. Sorry I did it on this one. Let's do it on these two. And replacing the RAM in these is easy enough. These kind of pop out, slide the new guys in, press it down, press it down, and just like that we have 16 gigs. And here you can see our poultry 60 gigabyte uh, M SATA disk. And yeah, I could go with a, like a one terabyte one, but again, that's more money that I don't want to spend on this. These are $50 nodes. I'm not going to spend like nearly $300 upgrading each of them. That would be completely insane. Okay, back on you go. And let's do the other one. Eh, this one got a little damaged in shipping, but you know what? It, it adds character. You know, none of us are perfect. Don't act like you're perfect. Okay. Ah. Okay, let's do this again. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll open these and show you. I mean, it's gonna look like this, but three of them, but you know what, for the sake of OCD. Yep, like I said, it's like this one, but uh, three. So this is it. This is going to be the setup. In total, we are now looking at a total of 12 threads, 48 gigabytes of RAM, and what, 12 terabytes? That's not too bad for a little uh, Kubernetes setup. And yes, I know it's not the most powerful. It's not the most reliable. This isn't server grade hardware or anything. I understand the risks, trust me. For those of you saying, oh, you're gonna regret it. You should have just bought it, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm good, relax. Okay, let's go through these in the server rack and I will be back to set things up. Okay, now that we have my drives mounted, we're going to go into my Longhorn configuration and look at how I got them set up. And luckily, it's extremely easy. I highly recommend Longhorn. It's a block-based storage system built by the rancher folks, and it's super easy to set up, super easy to get things set up, and yeah, let's take a look. So in my nodes, you can see all three of my nodes, cube one, cube two, and cube three. Simply go over here to edit nodes and disks, and down here, you'll be able to add a new disk. And you can see we've added one, called it USB, and we specified the mount path that we used before, which was mount USB. Add a little bit of reserved storage space, save it, and just like that, if we go back to dashboard, if you've done it correctly on all three nodes, we now have over 10 terabytes of storage that can be scheduled on here, which pretty freaking sweet, man. But that's it. At the point of this video, I, I don't know. I just took you guys along for the ride for my little upgrade. If you liked it, cool, drop a like below if you're interested 
in content like this, then consider subscribing because I'll probably have a good amount of Kubernetes stuff coming up. But yeah, that is it. I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreons and YouTube members. You guys are freaking sweet. You guys are full Iron Wolf Nash Rods. And I mean that. But that is all for today. If you've made it this far in the video, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.